mentioned actually uh, last game afterwards that you and Goody had a chat and said the training levels weren't at the right level. Um, how has training been this week and heading into the game um, on Sunday? Yeah, look, um, the boys have responded well. Um, they were disappointed as well with the performance last week. So um, it's, you know, you saw out there today that um, it was good atmosphere and a, a high level. So um, that's what we want. We want training to be at the, the best level um, because that then gives them the best chance to have success in the game on the weekend. And um, so you had a very high scoring March and then first game of April you come in a little bit flat. You're coming in in a match against a side that is coming in at tenth, but they're only a couple of ways from the final spot. How are you prepared to back against a side that will be this hungry? You know, it's a do or die situation for them with the counting down games. Yeah, look, I suppose um, you know Western have started the season you know a little bit flat, and they've been chasing ever since then. So um, we only played them seven weeks ago, and it was the same. Same then, you know, we went down 2-0 there and, and came back in the last 15 minutes to win 3-2. So um, the boys know um, that the way that Western play, you know, they're, they're a good side. And, you know, once they get a little bit of momentum in the game, they're a very difficult side to, to play against. So it's important that we have a good start like we did last week. We had a good start last week, but we just didn't go on with it in the second half last week. So um, it's important that we have that focus and that intensity for the full 90 minutes. And you've experienced that twice against them, two very high scoring games, 11 goals combined the last two games. Is it, are you expecting something similar tomorrow? Um, yeah, as you said, you know, Western need, need the points um, to make the finals. Um, we need the points as well to, you know, to keep pushing for the top two spot. Um, so there'll be opportunities in the game when games like that, they, they open up a little bit, especially as the game goes on. Um, so it's important that we um, keep our focus and, and defend with, with good discipline. Mm -hmm. Isaias is back this week, was back on the track. Now since coming back from his suspension a few months ago, he's looked like, again, a version of himself in his last in Adelaide United. How important is it to have him back out there for your team? Yeah, it's very important. He's a very crucial um, player for us. Um, he allows us to attack with a lot of numbers because Issa is um, very experienced and, and positions himself in, in good positions to stop those um, counter-attacks against us. So um, he just not um, brings that quality and experience with the ball that we sort of missed in the last 15, 20 minutes last week in, in the Sydney game where we just didn't have a, that experience in the middle of the park to get on the ball where, and to stop those attacks that Sydney were having against us. So um, it's, um, this will definitely um, be a, a huge plus to the side for tomorrow. And Joe Gauci comes into this game signing a new contract. How important is it to sign a player like that who's probably looking to take that next step in his career, but he's entrusted that next step with Adelaide United? How important is it for the club's direction to show you're happy to keep these players here? Yeah, look, it's important, you know, not just for, for JoJo, it's a little bit different to the outfield players where they might take the risk and go as a young age, um, but Joe um, is a very sensible um, young player um, and he, he's aware that he needs to be playing um, and not going over there to be a, a, into Europe as a squad player because um, it is difficult as a goalkeeper. Um, so he's still very young and he's still making mistakes. And it's important that he's in an environment where he can still learn and develop as a player. And when he does um, eventually make that move overseas, that he goes in and can play. My um, final one from me, a bit of a left field one. Now, Adelaide this week has been lit up with gather round with the AFL. So a big move was made by the AFL this year to move the grand final to Sydney. Now, obviously, the AFL needs money. They also need fan support. Do you? What do you think of the concept of a gather round in the A League to kind of get that money to maybe the tourism commission, but also to get fans interested and engaged with the league? Yeah, look, I, I think that's what the APL have sort of um, got down that um, path with the with the grand finals so to have that um, that week of football, um, like there'd be an All Stars game leading into a grand final. Um, so I think. Um, the APL, APL have gone with good intentions um, with what they wanted to do with the, with the game. Um, it was just um, poorly delivered. Um, I'm sure they're aware of that now, but um, you know, the decision's been made and we need um, all football supporters to get behind it um, because in the end, it's, we need the game to have success. And yes, we can be disappointed, but we can't um, you know, 
not turn up uh, just because we're disappointed with the decision. It's important that we still get behind the game and, and the teams that get to the grand final deserve to be supported. How, how connected is this group versus other groups that you've been part of? Yeah, look, I, I think that's um, clearly evident, um, the bond that our playing group have. Um, and I think it's um, been clearly evident over my time in charge of the playing group, um, how much they fight for each other and how much they stick up for each other. Um, and it's, you know, this year we haven't had to have relied on a lot of late goals like we did last year. Um, and that all becomes because of um, the closeness of the group. And when, you know, someone goes out, someone else comes in, they all want what's best for each other and for the team, which is um, clearly evident in our playing group. I know mathematically hard to finish on top, but I mean, how important is it to still, in the last few games, strive to finish a Yeah, look, you always say, um, you know, finals football is, is different to league football, um, but you want to be going into finals with good form. Um, so it's important, you know, we got through tough games. Um, so it's important that we keep on this run that we're on, you know, we're 12 games unbeaten and it'd be great to, you know, finish the season unbeaten and, and take that good form into the finals. How do you stay in the moment and not think about final finals? Yeah, look, we know that we've, um, you know, can't go lower than fourth. So it's important that we, you know, still keep focus on what we want to achieve um, and how we want to play. Um, and make those small changes that we need to against the opposition. Um, as I said, tomorrow's going to be a, a tough game against Western that are going to come out quite hard. Um, so it's important that we don't give them too many opportunities and make the most of ours. And you mentioned in the past, in the past couple of weeks that you were kind of surprised with the load someone like Craig Woodward had in the with the Socceroos uh, with his injury. Now, if you seal up second the next week or two, is there a plan to, I guess, rest someone like Woodward that's been carrying that load going into the final round if you seal that week off? Yeah, look, uh, you know, Goody's issue has been, you know, been going since, you know, we started pre-season. Um, he can manage um, from week to week. It's just the, um, the short turnarounds that um, he then starts to struggle with. But if he has a, a good break between games, he, he's fine. Um, so, you know, he said, a good nine day break now between the last game to this game so he's almost got himself back to to a, a good level where he can play without um uh, well play with only a little bit of pain how do you see the running because obviously western are still playing for something then going to perth they're still playing for something as well and then the mariners could be playing for you know uh seeding and stuff for the finals so how do you see that and also i guess just on the league in general because it's, everyone seems to be still having something to play for which is kind of a rarity based on recent seasons mm. to yeah, look, I, I think uh, the season's been a good good year. I think there's been some outstanding games. Um, and look, at the end of the day, um, we want a, a top two um, position. And it's important that we, you know, take it one game at a time. It's the old coach's cliche, but it's important that we just focus on tomorrow, um, get the job done, and then move on to, to the next week. And um, Luca got the, the A-League's Player of the Month uh, for last month as well, and then you've got... I think you've got the situation at the moment with obviously Hiroshi is, is a visa player and, and of course you know, given the minutes that, that he signed on for but obviously Luke was in some great form as well. Is that kind of a, a conundrum for you to, with that striking role? Um, look, Luca is a, is a very young player that's just come on to, to the scene this season so he's still learning and it's important that we um, will we'll put him in every now and then just to give him a little bit of a taste but he needs to be hungry, um, which he is. And you know he, he has to take opportunities that come his way. He's still learning, and and it, he's lucky that he's got. I say he's in an environment where he's encouraged to to learn. And there's no better you know striker in the league to learn off than Hiroshi. His hold up play is is excellent, and that's something that Luca needs to work on. And uh, Harry was just doing some runs around the pitch and stuff. How's how's he going? And then also I guess Bernardo as well. Um, yeah, look, Harry is responding um, exceptionally well to the to the injury. He had a little bit of a setback after the after the operation, um, but now it's settled down and he can start in increasing his running now. It's, um, I think this is his second, w second week of, of running. Um, so, you know, he's um, doing well and, you know, if, if things go well for him, he might be able to make an appearance in the finals, you never know. Um, and Bernie, you know, he's back now, full fitness. Um, you know, it's just unfortunate that he missed such a, you know, 
three quarters of the season plus pre-season. So it's unfortunate for him that he just has to bide his time and wait for an opportunity to get into the team and then, and be ready for when that opportunity comes. Because when it comes, if he, if he takes it, he stays in. He knows that. Um, but it's just unfortunate for him at the moment, which is football. Um, you know, the team is, is playing exceptionally well. Um, and he just has to wait for his time. Chris, you mentioned that Luca got player of the month for yourself, Carl, coach of the month. How are you with personal accolades? <laughs> I think we know the answer to that one. Um, look, yeah, um, it's, you know, to, to win that award, it's, it's because of um, the performance of the players. Um, so, yeah, it's, I suppose it's more of a, a team award than a coach award.